Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. James and St. Brendan's Anglican Church in Port Colborne for Sunday, July the 28th. Thank you so much for joining us for this morning's service, and we acknowledge that the land that we gather on is the traditional territory, first of the neutral people, and then of the Haudenosaunee and the Abenishami peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, the Niagara Purchase Treaty, and is within the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, it, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. It is also a reminder that the great standard of living that we have is directly related to the Indigenous peoples' resources, and their friendship. Let us just take a moment to bow our heads and prepare our thoughts for this morning's service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with, and with thy, thy spirit. spirit. Almighty God, unto, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and and from, and from whom, whom no secrets are hidden. Are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayers. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant will to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the second book of Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to his prophet Nathan, see now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, 
Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people, Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will say Psalm 89, verses 20 to 37 responsibly by the full verse. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My My hand hand will hold him fast, fast, and my my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn and higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statutes and do not keep my commandments, I will punish their transgressions with a rod and their inequities with the lash. But I will not take my love from him, nor let my faithfulness prove false. I will not break my covenant, nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once for all I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast forevermore like the moon, the abiding witness in the sky. Remember us, gracious God, when we cannot see your way and purpose, and renew in us the joy of your kingdom of light and life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. The second reading is from the letter to Paul to the of Paul to the Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. 
So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went to shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them. And because, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land of Gerenaset and moored the boat. When they went out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on the mats to wherever they saw, wherever they heard he was, and wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick at the marketplace and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and their Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this week, I actually had a multitude of plans. I had, I had people to see. I had ma- many phone calls to make. You know, as I said, uh, you know, I, things to do, places to go. Then all of a sudden, on Tuesday afternoon, I, I blew my back. And everything came to a screeching halt. Um, I was pretty annoyed. I muddled through. I stayed home for a few days. I worked from home. I didn't see all the people I wanted to see. I made a few phone calls when I could find a position that was comfortable enough for me to sit in long enough to actually talk on the phone. Frankly, um, to be honest, I was a little annoyed. It It was quite frustrating. Have you ever had a week like this where you, you know, you had these plans and, uh, Things kind of get turned upside down. Or maybe they're not a week's plans. Maybe they're big life plans and a big monkey wrench gets thrown into the middle of things. How did you handle them? In today's gospel, we hear Jesus and his disciples, they had plans. They had plans to kind of go away and spend some time and rest for a while. And then everything got flipped upside down. This gospel is from Mark 6. The beginning of the chapter of Mark 6, Jesus had sent out his apostles two by two to cast out demons and anoint and cure the sick. Today we've reached the part of the gospel where they've returned and they're excited and and they want to share all their experiences with Jesus. But he's like, you know what? Let's, Let's go away. Let's rest. Let's spend some time together. He made plans. He had plans for them to take a break, uh, a little retreat, as it were. They planned to cross the the lake in a boat to a supposed quiet place where they could rest and relax and eat and drink. And then the plans all get turned upside down. 
Have you ever heard the line, you know, make a plan for your life and then God kind of laughs? Well, I think Jesus might have been the one who coined that phrase. Because, yeah, the plan for this wonderful retreat, it, you know, not only does it get thrown a curveball, it's like completely blown out of the water. I mean, the people, when they heard where Jesus was going, they literally ran ahead to, because they knew where the boat was going to dock. I mean, talk about having a monkey wrench thrown into your plans. I am sure we can all tell stories of having um, our plans and having monkey wrenches thrown into them. How we had expectations of things and how they didn't go as we expected. Life didn't go the way we wanted it to go or the way we thought it should go. You know, life has a way of doing that, throwing us little things, whether they be really big or small, that can just kind of put us into a tizzy. Whether it's, you know, something as simple as, you know, forgetting to set the alarm one day and sleeping in, or maybe you miss an important phone call or an appointment, or maybe it's you take that dream job and it turns out that it's not as wonderful as you thought. Or maybe it's the fact that you retire and you have these wonderful plans and then you are diagnosed with something quite serious. The plans in our lives can be turned upside down in 101 ways. The questions that we need to look at is, how do we handle it when we get those curveballs? And where is God in the middle of all of it? I actually mentioned this last week, talking about finding God in the good and in the bad. And our gospel today, I think Jesus helps us to look at how we roll with it, how we deal with it. First question, you know, what happens when your plans get flipped upside down? How do you react? Well, some of us, you know, we can get angry or frustrated, or we work really hard to try and control what's actually going on in our life to make sure things go the way we want. We could blame others, or we pray to God and we negotiate. God, if you just let me have this, then I will do this, this, and this for you. Jesus and his disciples, they deserved a break. They did. And when they saw the crowd, I mean, let's be honest, it was a huge crowd. Jesus could have turned the boat around. Or he could have just been yelling at them, going, for Pete's sake, let us, leave us alone. Let us have a break. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't whine, he doesn't complain, he doesn't negotiate with God some free, with, for some free time. He acknowledges the situation with his disciples and he deals with it. Basically saying, they're, they're lost sheep without a shepherd. We have to talk to them. Here's the thing. We all make plans. We all have goals, we all have dreams. And however, <laughs> When things get flipped upside down, when we are thrown curveballs, we do have a tendency to be frustrated and disappointed, and then we look at that new situation in a very negative light, as I did earlier in this week. I mean, life's supposed to be planned, right? It's supposed to be organized. It's not supposed to be crazy and all turned upside down, right? Well, here's a little interesting thought. Why can't life be both? What if the plans of our life and the curveballs that we get are all meant to be? They're meant to help us. You know, one is not better than the other. They're equally important. What if they are meant to be a part of our life so that we can experience life with God in the middle of it? with God helping us through it. Now, I'm pretty sure I've said this before. I don't believe that God is, you know, some puppet master pulling strings. 
I don't believe that God causes bad things to happen. I do believe that God is on our life journey. And I do believe that we are all born with a calling or a vocation. When we're born, the seeds of our life are within us, our callings, our vocations. And hopefully as we grow, we have these seeds of vocation nurtured within us, whether it be by the Holy Spirit, our family, our friends. Eventually, hopefully, we end up where we're meant to be. Now, with saying that, I don't want you to think that we don't have control over our lives. I do. I'm not saying that you should take on kind of a que sera, sera attitude and let the chips lie, you know, where they may. No. I think setting plans and creating goals for one's life are incredibly important. What I am proposing is that in the middle, in the middle of everyday life, with all the plans and with all the curveballs or interruptions, God is there. God is in the middle of it to help strengthen us, strengthen our spiritual lives, strengthen our spiritual practices. God is in the everyday life. God is showing up whether we realize it or not. In the everyday activities planned or not, we get to learn about ourselves. We get to learn about love. In the planned events and the upside down events, we learn about patience, we learn about understanding, and we are offered opportunities to grow and opportunities to demonstrate compassion. When life throws us a curveball, it is an invitation for us into the mystery of creation. It's an invitation for us to deepen our relationship with the Lord. And being able to balance the well-laid plans with the unexpected flips and flops, you know, allow us to kind of show everyone our relationship with the Lord and show that love and that compassion. It allows us to love, allows us to forgive. It helps us practice our faith and demonstrate hope in the midst of uncertainty. I've never been a fan of the saying, all things happen for a reason. Because it also makes it sound like God plans bad things as well as good things. And I just can't believe that God plans harm in any way, shape, or form. However, I do believe that when curveballs happen, when life is interrupted, we can learn lessons from them. Maybe not right away, and most definitely not while we're in the middle of it, but eventually. Faithfulness, whether we realize it or not, it's, it's intentional. It's about being intentional in our plans, in our goals, and it's about being intentional with how we look at and deal with the disruptions that happen in our life. It's about intentionally living as best we can as Jesus did and the way he would have wanted us to. I said earlier, you know, Today's gospel demonstrates how we can deal with situations. There's a multitude of stories. In Mark 4, Jesus and his disciples are going again on a break. Jesus is in the boat, and he's sleeping. His plan is to sleep as they cross the lake. Unfortunately, his plan is interrupted. Why? Because there's a storm. And these men who were fishermen, who had years of experience on, on the sea, for whatever reason panicked, and they woke Jesus up. He calmed the sea. He calmed the winds. He didn't get angry. He just took care of them. He dealt with the situation. 
In Mark 5, Jesus goes to help Jairus' daughter. That's the plan. The plan is he's going to go to his house. He's going to help take care of this daughter. But that plan's interrupted because on his way there, the hemorrhaging woman touches the fringe of his cloak. She had her own plan. Well, she is healed, which is great. And Jesus now tries to continue on with his plan, but now the news is that Jesus took too long and the girl has died. Yeah, that's okay. Jesus' plan. Death can't get in the way of Jesus' plan because he goes and he raises her from the dead. Here's the point. I think Jesus sets for us wonderful examples of how we need to be fully present and fully faithful in every situation. No matter what the situation may be, no matter who is standing before us, whether the situation was planned or unexpected. It's how he lived his life. And I think if we are able to do this, if we are able to balance the planned and the unexpected, then hopefully we can discern the movement of the Holy Spirit within our lives. We can discern the movement of the Holy Spirit in the plans and in the disruptions. And then hopefully we can see God's beauty and God's grace and we will know that the Lord is with us. What are your plans? Have they been turned upside down? Where is God in your life right now? Where is God calling you in the midst of everything that is happening? Are you able to kind of stand back and take a look at the bigger picture and see where God is calling you? I started by telling you I, I had this really super busy week planned and then everything got kind of flipped upside down by throwing my back out. I'm, I'm good, by the way. A little tender, but I'm okay. But because I stayed at home, yes, I did some work. I answered some emails, and I made a few phone calls. But because I stayed at home, I actually rested. I slept. I didn't realize I was that tired. <laughs> because I stayed at home, I was able to finish a book, this lovely book I was reading, that I've been reading for about six months just because I've been so busy and most days when I get home I'm too tired to read. Because I was at home, I had the pleasure of meeting one of my husband's cousins that I had never met before. And because I was at home, I was able to connect my life this past week to this week's gospel. How, you know, getting thrown a curveball, how you can kind of breathe through it and see where God is in all of it. We all make plans. We all have hopes. We all have dreams. We all have desires. The thing is, is we have to remember that in the midst of all our plans, God also has plans for us. God has hopes and desires for all our lives. And sometimes what we need to do is just take a step back, breathe, rest, and enjoy the plan or even the curveball. Amen. Let us stand together and confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty. 
creator of heaven and earth. And I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. O oh Lord, our righteousness, gather us again into your fold, reviving our souls and guiding our pathways, that as we receive, we may also share your goodness and mercy with each other as members, joined together in your holy household. Loving Christ, help us, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, our righteousness, reclaim the world this nation and this community from unfaithful shepherds who scatter and divide your flocks by evil doing. Bestow, bestow special grace and blessings upon all leaders everywhere who strive to dispel fear and dismay, who deal wisely with and with justice, and who foster safety and hope among all your people. Loving Christ, help us, O Lord. O Lord, our righteousness, anoint your, with your love and keep in our prayers all those who are troubled, in pain, or suffering from illness or disability, and renew the spirit of those who give them help. We now join our hearts together to pray for those on the St. JMB prayer list. Janice, Eleanor, Terry, Linda, Donna, Sally, Judy, and their families, and those in need of our healing on our healing prayer list, Mary, Elizabeth, Lois, Louise, Robert, Linda, Nancy, Mark, Maureen, Dominic, Larry, Julia, Donna, and Megan. Loving Christ, Help us, O Lord. O Lord, our righteousness, comfort our hearts for those who have loved and whom we have loved and sent into your open arms to dwell in the joy of your glorious kingdom forever. We pray for all those who live with the sorrow and grief of their loss. Hold them in your comforting and loving arms and be with them as they build a new life without their loved one. Loving Christ, Help us, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, our righteousness, embrace the hearts of those who shepherd us in your church, praying especially for Bishop Susan and Reverend Jody. Replenish their souls with enduring energy and sustain them with your guiding hand as they lead us to your eternal home. Loving Christ, help us, O oh Lord. God of compassion and hope, Guide us on as one new humanity in place of many, that we may break down walls of division and be reconciled to you in the peace of Christ as one body through the, Christ, through the cross. We ask these prayers through Jesus, the cornerstone who joins us together, and the Holy Spirit, our access to the divine, who together with you are one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come on to me, all that labor are in heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. 
If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter after serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all of them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, and pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Peace be with you at home, everyone. Let us pray. O oh God, accept our praise and thanksgiving. Help us in all we do to offer ourselves as true and living sacrifice. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with, with thy spirits. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It, it is meet and right so, so to do. It is very meet and right and our bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things, who has gathered for us together in this Eucharistic feast that we may be renewed in love, joy, and peace. Therefore, with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O glory be to thee, O Lord, O God, who didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy did give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. 
do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with this thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son has commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and his precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. We also humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word, and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and water, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, and we pray to thee, Lord our God. And we do earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake in this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, and that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Now, as our, uh, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is to always have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Dear friends, I invite you at this time, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints in the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, O many, and make us one in you. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, as we are strengthened in these holy mysteries, may our lives be a continual offering, holy and acceptable in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the peace and blessing of Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through this wilderness and protect you during this storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. So last week I had no announcements, this week I have four. Um, first, this Wednesday, um, I sent out an, uh, a Facebook email a, a, a month or so ago asking if anybody knit, um, because there's a ministry that I really enjoy, <laughs> that I would like to start, um, and it's the prayer shawl ministry. So um, what I'm gonna do is Wednesday, this Wednesday, upcoming Wednesday, um, I'm gonna have the tent set out in the park around 10.30, and if you knit uh, and you're interested in what this ministry is all about, bring your needles, bring your, bring your yarn, and we'll sit and we'll, you know, maybe an hour, hour in a bit, um, and just chat, and I'll tell you all about it. So Wednesday, uh, what is Wednesday? It's July the, what's, today's the 18th, so the 21st. So yes, Wednesday, July the 21st at 1030 in the park. So please come. Next week is the fourth Sunday of the month, which means we have three services. We will have the 8.30, we will have the 10.30, and we will have the 4 p.m. praise and worship. Um, I don't know if you caught the praise and worship service last month. I hope that you will watch it this month. Um, yeah, it's, you know what, it's just fun. It's, music's different and um, it's just a little more relaxed. Um, so yeah, please join us for the 4 o'clock service. Some very exciting news. If anybody is watching Facebook or um, anything, you might have seen that the bishop put out a letter giving us permission to open. Yes, I know. Um, in theory, uh, she has stated that we can open as early as July 25th. Um, we don't have to open July 25th, but we have to be open by September 12th. So after um, discussing it with corporation, there are some things that we need to do. I am going on vacation. Pat is going away. So mark Sunday, August the 15th on your calendar. Sunday, August the 15th, we will be back here in person. I know. I'm so excited. Um, we will, you're going to have to call again, like you did before, and let us know what service you're coming to, how many people are coming. Um, don't call before August 9th, please. Okay? Wait till August 9th, and then we, we'll start, you know, taking those emails and those phone calls. And, um, but yeah, so please, mark August 15th. If you are comfortable, we would love, love to see you. <sighs> Last. This one's hard. Um, this really is an announcement. This is more of a letter. It's from Linda LaMarche. She asked if I would read this. As some of you may know, Linda has not been well. Um, and I've been getting lots of phone calls, and I know lots of people have been asking about her. So she sent me this, and her and I talked yesterday, and she asked if I would read it. Firstly, I would like to thank my St. Jane's and St. Brendan's church family for all their prayers and their concerns. <clears throat> it means a lot. It also helps a lot. I am terribly sorry that I have not, and it's taken me so long to update all of you. 
on my condition and the next steps. My cancer has returned several parts of my body, resulting in a terminal diagnosis. While my prognosis is not good, I am incredibly, I am incredibly thankful for all of you. Your thoughts, your prayers, and your love. I will be in touch with you when I can. Blessings and in your service, Linda. I know if you're listening and you're watching, you're probably a little taken back by that. And believe me, I was too. What I am going to ask, please do not call her today. Please don't. Um, she has stated she will try and call people. Let her have some time. Um, she's at home. She's with her family this week, weekend. So um, all I ask is that you continue to keep Linda in your prayers. Our service is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.